Hello and welcome to ICT and Computer Science with Miss Price. I hope you're excited about this video, it's about scanners. Don't be bored by that. Scanners are amazing. We are going to look into 2D scanners and 3D scanners. Scanners are fascinating. They are saving our lives every day. How are they doing this? They are protecting the security of us in this country. How are they doing this? Finding out more about the human body in medicine. Watch the video to find out. Don't forget to like and don't forget to subscribe. Enjoy. Here we are and we are going to immerse ourselves into the wonderful world of scanners. Firstly, let's take a minute to look at what a scanner actually is. You're probably looking at this image right here and thinking, Miss Price, these things haven't been used since the 1990s. Well, that's not quite true. And you're going to find out why in this video. Firstly, scanners are just simply an input device. So that means we do use this to put data into the computer. The beauty of scanners is, is they can take a hard copy, which could be a photo, like maybe a photo of your mum or dad when you was a baby, um, sorry, when they were babies rather, and digital cameras weren't around, phone cameras weren't around. So is all you have is simply this photo, and it could be damaged over time, maybe it's faded well the beauty of it is is we can actually take that photo and we can make it into a digital copy with that you can edit it so you can use it in Photoshop you can edit the picture you can store it you can email it you can upload it onto the internet onto social media and you can do the same with any document so the beauty of these scanners are is, is that we can actually take something before the digital age that we're in right now and we can make it part of our digital age. So there are two types of scanners. So we're going to look at firstly the 2D scanner. Here are the steps to scanning. It's really simple. You raise the cover, which is here, place the document on the glass, then a white light will come over this glass right here where the scan head will move and produce an image. Then that image will fall into a charge couple device, CCD. If you've ever used a scanner, you probably not really thought of anything more than what happens. They're such a small device and such a simple technology. The charge couple device. So I'll bring these up here. Now, what happens is, is that the, the movement of the electrical charge will basically convert your hard copy into pixels. This is what happens. So you've got the lamp here, which is the scanner head, and it will move across the um, glass plate, so across here. So there's the original document. And then that, that light and that image is reflected onto these mirrors which go through the lens here so it almost takes a picture of your picture I suppose. Then you've got your charge couple right here, your charge couple device right here and then your image becomes made up of thousands of light sensitive elements which are basically pixels. So what happens to your image that will go from this original document here, bounces off these mirrors through this lens and then becomes an imprint of pixels, is your image will become a representation of what the original document is. So now you will have the hard copy and as if by magic you've also got a soft copy. Optical Character Recognition or OCR. This is amazing and most uh, modern computers are now equipped with this because it's so useful, it's become part of our everyday lives. 
So the scanned text can be converted into text file format and editing, edited into word processing software. You can take your textbook, you can place it on an OCR scanner, you can select an area of text and then that text can be saved as a fully editable word process document. This obviously has caused problems in some places, like at one time it did um, contribute to crime, but of course it can also be useful for you doing your studying and your research. So we've got F2D scanners, have you ever thought of 3D scanners? Well, they do exist. Here's an example of a 3D scanner. You're probably sitting here thinking, well, this is actually no different to what I can do on my phone. Well, you're completely wrong. So you can scan solid objects and output a 3D image onto your screen. Two-dimensional objects, as you know from your maths classes, have a y-axis which goes down and an x-axis which goes across. To make something 3D, you need to add your Z coordinates. So they've gone one step further from being able to scan something that's two dimensional to be able to like, let's add these Z coordinates. The images can be used in CAD or 3D printing. So if you can 2D print, why not be able to 3D print? How do they work? Now they do use several technologies. As you see in the previous picture, they're using lasers to pinpoint, they use white lights to scan, and then they use magnetic resonance to actually form the shapes. And I will discuss more how they will actually form these shapes. Here's an example of a CT scan um, where the technologies are used. Right, so here we go. Application of 2D scanners. I've discussed with you what the scanners are, but where are they used? And you may not have ever thought about it, but I have because I fly several times a year. But they are used in airports in several countries. When I take my passport, I take my passport to the gate, I scan it on the flatbed scanner, as you can see right here. What happens after that? Have you ever thought about that? So, it scans my passport and my information will appear somewhere else. Something has to happen after that. If I could just take my passport and just scan it on a flatbed scanner, well then I could be using a fake passport, I could be using somebody else's passport. So there needs to be some validation process here and this is something that the application of 2d scanners has so we've got the 2d scanning technology and it will of course use the ocr technology intelligent ocr not just for your computer but also for checking passports here you've got your image and here you've got your text now what do computers read? I hope you said ones and zeros. Because OCR technology is so intelligent, it can manipulate the data in so many different ways. It reviews the image from the database. So what it does is it's going to take the text and it's going to sort it into the field and it's going to compare that information to the database. And this all happens Within a minute, how long does it take you to actually scan your passport? Well, thankfully, because I've got a new passport, I'm out of those gates within less than a minute. Which is amazing. So it does all that in less than a minute. Now, obviously, your information is going to be stored somewhere. And it's going to store it as, well, a bunch of ones and zeros. So when it actually captures that data, it's converting all your text into a bunch of ones and zeros. 
but not your image. So don't think that your image is going to be stored on a database into the computer like this. Your image is simply stored as a JPEG. But the computer is not a human being. So the computer cannot just look at that image and compare it and say, oh yes, that's Jane Doe, it looks exactly like her. Well, there's many people that do look alike. So when your face is being scanned by the facial recognition system, an image is taken of you compared to the one on your passport. Now, you're probably thinking, well, for example, men can change their faces. They can grow moustaches, they can grow beards. Women can dye their hair. We can have our eyebrows shaped, you know, people change. So what the facial recognition system does is, is that it measures the distance between the eyes. The width of your nose, the shape of your cheekbones, the length of your jawline, the shape of your eyebrows. Because those things are not going to change. So the gap between your eyes isn't going to change. Just because you're growing a beard, the width of your nose isn't going to change. So the facial recognition system will pinpoint places on your face and in your passport picture. Application of 3D scanners in CT scanners. Now this is dead interesting. Something called computed tomographic scanners. So here's a CT scanner that is used in hospitals and it will take scans of your body. And they're used to create a 3D image of a solid object. So the solid object is you, it's your organs, whatever it's scanning. If you've had something wrong with your stomach, it's going to scan your stomach. Your stomach is the 3D object. But I wanted to think more about what tomography means. So apparently, it's a technique for displaying a representation of a cross-section through human body or other solid objects using x-rays or ultrasound. So tomography has been around for a while. So take these key words. It is taking a representation. So if you're going for a heart scan, so if you're going to be CT scanned and they're looking at your heart, the image they've got of your heart is a representation of it. Not exactly what it looks like, it's a representation. And the same as when you have an x-ray. So if you've broken a bone and you take an x-ray, it's a representation of your bone. So think about that. So we need to keep this in our heads. These 3D scanners and CT scanners are a representation. Now, how were they made? How do they make these representations of what is inside our body? The technology builds up lots of 2D slices. Those two-dimensional slices that get built up, I suppose stacked up, will build a 3D image representation. Each slice, not slide, sorry, is stored digitally so the whole object can be uh, represented. I don't know if you've ever used, what was it called, Google Draw, I think it was, um, where you could actually build the 3D images. So the difference between the 2D images, with a 2D image obviously you can scroll up and down and you can zoom in and zoom out. With the 3D image you can pan around it. So it's going to build this digital representation of, of, your, of your heart, your lungs, or whatever it's going to scan. So here's some examples. So you can see here, there's some 2D representations of what's going on in this person's lung. But then here, you've got the 3D representation. So it's obviously pointed out there's an abnormality. So that would be a representation of the abnormality that is going on in that lung. Now, I thought, for me, that this was a really good representation of what I had going on in my brain. So, 
I thought, well, when they they scan this heart and they build it up in slices, I don't know if you've ever seen a 3D printer actually print anything. So it does actually print it in slices. And you can see here, each reel is representing a slice. This is actually a laser cut image from wood. So they um, got the representation of the heart on the screen and then the laser cutter actually cut this heart out of wood. And you know, the slices I felt was a representation of what the computer is thinking. Names for tomographic scanners. Now I thought this was quite interesting. So these scanners are saving people's lives every day and actually finding out more about what is going on. So here's an MRI, a magnetic resonance imaging. Somebody's obviously got a problem in their brain, they've had some strange symptoms and the MRI scan builds a representation of this brain. I mean obviously if you was to see a real brain, that is not what a real brain looks like. But this is a, mag um, a magnetic resonance representation of the brain and possibly, well it looks like an abnormality here. So what it does is, is that it builds up this representation it obviously tells it to highlight any abnormalities. X-rays. X-rays have been used for many, many years as, as you well know and they're now being used in airports. So when my bag is actually scanned in the airport and the image goes back to the screen it builds a representation of what is in my bag so it focuses on the shapes and as you can see here this very very naughty person has got a firearm in their bag so tomographic scanners also not only saving our lives but they're also protecting our security at airports then we've got radio frequency then we have gamma rays CT scanners as uh, we've looked at briefly and this is my favorite a single photon emission computed tomography so or known as SPECT now we don't know a huge amount of human brain as it's so complex but we're trying to learn and technology is helping us with that and I quite like the way here that it's built a representation of the human brain with Alzheimer's disease which is an extremely cruel and debilitating condition and then it's also got a representation of the brain um, for someone who suffers depression which is, is an, another extremely cruel and debilitating mental illness and I just like the way that it's sort of colour coordinated here now I really really hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching Please don't forget to subscribe because I'm going to be uploading videos on a regular basis during this summer break and throughout the academic year. Please like the videos and also don't forget to click on the description. There's a link to an activity that is completely free. With every video I will try to offer some kind of activity to help you with your studying and for teachers you can assign these videos as homework and give them the act uh, give your students the activity to do as homework thank you for watching please do subscribe please do keep clicking on the likes